And hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Cyrus Webb Presents. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Uh, excited about today's show. As you know, we are continuing our series with Dr. Teresa A. Smith, or Dr. Taz, from her book, Transformation. Today, we're in message number eight. If you guys have missed any of the messages we have done so far, you can be able to catch all of them either on our IG or you can find them on our YouTube channel as well. Today's a great message. I think... Probably one of my favorite ones in the book, Message 8, is Positive Self-Talk. So we'll be talking to Dr. Taz about that. There she is. Going to go ahead and bring her in and we'll begin today's show. If you guys have any questions, as always, we'll be able to bring those on camera as well. And my invite to the doctor. And we'll go ahead and start with today's program. Next week, just to give you guys a heads up, we will have a one-hour show as we're going throughout Message is 9 and 10, but Dr. Taz, how are you? Great, Cyrus. How are you? Doing amazing. Glad to see you as always. And I was just saying uh, that today's message, I believe, is one of my favorite ones. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been scared all day. Really? Yes. <laughs> Never know what you're going to ask me. Well, look, both of us are good at this one, I think. I mean, both of us share messages all the time on all social media. Uh, yes. that fit this topic perfectly. So I'm actually going to go into it by reading a part of what you write there. Again, we're in transformation. If you guys do not have the book by Dr. Taz, by Dr. Therese A. Smith, you see we both have ours there. We have message number eight, and the message is positive self-talk. And I love the fact that you, you give some of your favorite scriptures, Dr. Mm -hmm. Taz. One of those uh, is Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I love the fact as you go into this message, you talk about the connection between the scriptures and positive self-talk. Of course, if you think about God's word, Taz, you would think, you know, mostly positive anyway, right? Mm -hmm. what, what has it been like for you to be able to find that positivity through scripture? You know, Cyrus, um, I'll tell you, as I was prepping for this, um, this segment, I was reminded that no matter how often you hear a scripture, mm -hmm. sometimes it takes time for it to really get down in your soul and in your DNA. Yeah. And so as I was reading and, and meditating on these scriptures, I thought about the first one that you didn't mention, but I'm going to go there because okay. it says, don't fool yourself into thinking that you're a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and then it's out the other. And so when you talk about the significance or the importance of the scriptures and then positive self-talk, you know, really, James is being very clear. Mm -hmm. We say that we, we believe this. We say that we're talking positive, we're speaking life, but it's going in one ear and out the other. And so what it says for me is that it is a very challenging walk, if we're really honest, because yeah. some days we do it well, and then some days we don't do it as well, but it is a necessary process uh, that we have to go through. So for me, I think that just having the scriptures to reinforce what we are doing as human beings, because that's basically what James is saying. To me, it says, okay, there are going to be up days, there's going to be some down days, up and down, but that's okay. That's just part of the process. Yeah. I, I think the other thing, Todd, though, for me, is that it goes to the first message, that change is challenging. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they were raised around negativity. Um, they did not hear positive things about themselves or their family members or from their friends. So positivity does not necessarily come natural for them. Now, I was raised in a different situation. I tell people, I think I was born at just the right time, Todd. I was born in 1975. Um, the world wasn't as crazy <laughs> as it had been before I was born. It was crazy in 1975, but not as crazy. But I was raised around people who actually had a positive outlook. And I never will forget my grandmother who had lived through, you know, not only segregation, my grandmother and my mother both picked cotton top. Wow. So the, these were people who knew what those times were like. It wasn't just something they read about. They lived through it. And my grandmother told me, I never will forget when I was 11 years old, that I could be anything I wanted to be. 
And I said, anything? I never will forget this conversation. I said, anything? And she said, Cyrus, if you work hard and have faith in God, you can be anything. She believed that. Now, I, I later wondered if she really believed that or she felt it was important for, for me to believe that. And I bring that up when I'm talking about this topic because I think if I had been told, Cyrus, you're short, you're black, <laughs> you're from Mississippi, <laughs> you know, you, your eyes are stuck to get, you know, I wonder if I would have looked at the world differently. But because it was reinforced in me earlier that I could do anything, I believe that. I believed it and embraced it. So I bring that up to say this, Todd. How important is our surroundings in this? Because both of us both know what it's like to have challenges, whether mm -hmm. you're talking about growing up or as an adult. How, how difficult is it for us to make sure that we're having positivity reinforced in us so that we can make that transformation for ourselves? I think that is very uh, important, Cyrus. You know, when you were speaking, I had several things running through my brain. I thought about the the contradictions sometimes depending upon the environment that we're raised in. Mm -hmm. Meaning one moment someone is telling me I can do anything I want to do. Then the next moment they're telling me you don't have enough sense to do anything. And the language may vary, right. but that's in essence what you're having, you know, as children, that's what you're experiencing. But I believe that then as children or as we grow into teenagers and adults, we then have to hold on to something that says, well, the, this person is saying today I'm a good person. I can be anything I want to be. Or in the next moment, they're saying I'm not a good person and I'm not going to amount to anything. I still have to have something on the inside where I'm telling myself, regardless of what's happening around me, I still have the ability to be anything I want to be. It's up to me to pursue it. And, you know, oftentimes, as you said, we I do do this every day. I talk about that cheerleader. You have to learn to be your own cheerleader. Yeah. Now, that sounds strange, but, you know, sometimes we look external for validation, but we have to validate ourselves because only then, um, what's the word I want to use? You're not held hostage to whether or not somebody else feels that you can achieve. Right. You're only held hostage to what you believe. And it's okay if you're up and down in your beliefs about yourself. That means one day I got to be a better cheerleader. I got to really, really, really cheer hard. The next day I don't have to cheer as hard. But I should be doing it for myself, not looking external for someone else to do it. So I think the environment is very important. We are products of our environment. A friend of mine was really my sister. She likes to say, let me see if I can say it right. I am, which is, I am, what well, was it? Uh, you, you can be from some place, but not be of that place. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to quote it the right way. Because you can be of an environment, but you don't have to be the environment. Mm. So how you look at your environment and what you're trying to achieve determines what you can achieve. If I'm going to take on all that negativity and carry it with me forever, then I may get stuck. Right. But if I can look at the negative and say, okay, it is what it is. I may have to work through some things, but I'm going to move forward. Don't let the negativity or the environment prevent you from achieving. Yeah. Such a great point. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, you're watching Cyrus Webb Presents. We're here today with Dr. Therese A. Smith. Part of our series with her book, Transformation. We're in message number eight this week. Next week, as I was mentioning, we have an hour wrap up is we're going to messages nine and 10, but today we're talking about positive self-talk. That is the topic for today. You go on to say this, uh, Dr. Taz, on page 37 of the print edition, for those who have the print edition of the book, self-talk is the inner dialogue you have with yourself. This conversation guides your physical and emotional interactions with strangers, friends, family, co-workers, and significant others. To encourage healthy exchanges, you have to supply your conscious and an unconscious mind with specific messages. So I want to talk about that because, again, the reason why this is challenging, change is challenging, is because that's work. It's very easy for us to focus on what I don't have mm -hmm. or how things are not for me, rather mm -hmm. who I am, what I have, and what I'm grateful for. How have you been able to do that, Taj? How have you been able to make the decision 
to focus on the positive instead of the negative because that really is going to help with that positive self-talk. Cyrus, it is a everyday, every moment battle. Now, folks, it's a battle, yes, because, you know, I was doing some housework earlier, and I found myself thinking, because I am thinking while I'm working, yeah. and then it's like, no, 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 you're not going to think about that, because that's not your issue. That's somebody else's issue. I can't take that on. Then I was doing some more housework, and then I started thinking about, it's like an internal dialogue, and really it was. I was having this conversation in my head about something but I was still on somebody else's issue and what that meant was their issue how can I say it the internal dialogue I had to stop it because I was taking their issues and making it my issues or any concerns that I had regarding that person then I'm taking other issues and it's just becoming a snowball and it's like, no, you have to stop that. So when I say it's an everyday, you have to be conscious of it. Now, this just happened to be about an individual. It can be work. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know, you see if you come up something work. Well, that's not really my job. Yeah. But, you know, I'll help her out. Or it is my job, but I don't want to do my job. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> why am I even um, going through this? I'm hired to do a job to the best of my ability, and then I get paid. Is everything going to be the way that I want it to be on the job? No. Right. But why make your whole work existence, your work life worse or more challenging because you're going through this internal dialogue? Why not change the script? Mm -hmm. Think positive things about it. Well, you know, um, I'm still learning, but I'm doing, I'm doing a good job. I'm getting better every week. You know, I'm learning new things. I'm getting faster. Again, just looking at it totally different, and then pretty soon you're off to the races, meaning that that is exactly what's happening. It was happening before, but you didn't recognize it because you're looking at the glasses being half empty yeah. instead of half full. And it really is about perspective. You know, how do you see things? You know, I just had an eye exam recently, and it was very interesting how the gentleman kept flipping the lens. And it would be like, well, I can see. And then he'd flip it again. He's like, was well, that better? I'm like, well, that's better. And I'm like, he'd flip it again. You know, and it was like, is it A, meaning one, two, or three? But I could see with all of them. But it was just a smidgen of a difference between two lens as to which one was clearer for me. And that's the same way it is with the self-talk. You know, whatever you're speaking, it is coming to pass. It really is. We're manifesting it. So think positive, speak it clearly so that what you want to see is actually what you get versus the stuff that you're talking about that you really didn't want to see. But that's what you're seeing. And I think, Cyrus, Sometimes when folks think that things are not going their way, they have manifested what they're seeing and they don't even realize that that's what they've done. You know, all they see is, oh, this is not good. This is not what I wanted. But that's what you were manifesting because that's what you were seeing. That's what you were saying. And they weren't even aware of it. Mm -hmm. I love that you said there are several things you said there. One, I'm totally guilty of the first thing you mentioned which is taking other people's stuff and making it my own stuff. Now, I do get rid of it pretty quick these days because I just don't have the time. <laughs> but but I, I catch myself doing it. I yes. catch myself doing it. Mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. That don't have anything to do with me. You know, I, you know, you want the best. I've gotten to this place because I want the best for people, but I realize I am not the savior. No. That is not my role. <laughs> you no. know, uh, I can try to be the best person I can be, but I cannot save anyone. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the mistake a lot of people make. They think, oh, I have to save this person or I have to help this person make the best decision. When we sometimes make the best decision for our own selves, let alone for someone else. So mm -hmm. I, I can totally agree with that. The other thing you mentioned that I think is really interesting that I know I have seen myself having to do and I, and I don't think people do realize it. And that is that we are manifesting yes. these things because we talk about the words of our mouth. The scripture talks yes. about that. Yes. The meditation of our heart. So if we are meditating on these things that are not good, we can't be surprised when that's what we're around. Okay. You know, I mean, 
because if you're meditating on good stuff, that's going to bring you a totally different vibe, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that goes to the other point about accepting responsibility. Another one of the messages there. What do you want our audience to know, Taz, about that? About how so many times, instead of us pointing the finger at someone else, the importance of really turning the mirror and looking at ourselves about where we are and what's keeping us there. We search, you said, you know, um, and, and I always butcher things, but it's okay. I think it's funny yeah. um, because you got to laugh at yourself. But what is it they say? You point your finger, but you've got, what, three pointing back at you? Yeah. That's, and, it's, and you can see that. There's three of them pointing back at me. So it's not Cyrus. It's not this person. It's not that person. And I'll bring it home, you know, because, again, you know, I've survived trauma. It's not the person who molested me. It's me. Because I have a decision to make. Am I going to walk around with that baggage for my entire life? Or am I going to get to a place where I understand it, I dealt with it, and then I have to shift? I have to transform. I have to move on. Because if not, then I'm the person that's keeping me held hostage. It's not the incident. It's not the individual. And I think that for some, for us, sometimes it's very hard to just grab hold to hope, for lack of a better word, yeah. and realizing that we, it's, it's like we're manifesting the hope based upon what we're doing and what we're saying, because hope is not something really tangible. You know, it's a, I'm going to say it this way, guys, it's a concept. Yeah. So I have to grab it that I have to manifest it so it then continues to encourage me as I try to move forward. So when we talk about accountability, I'm the person that's accountable. I'm the person that's responsible for my life, responsible for my happiness, my joy. It's on me. It's not on my parents. Mm -hmm. It's not on my loved ones. It's not on my friends. It's on me. And I have to take that responsibility because if I don't take the responsibility, then is it right for me to give that responsibility to someone else? In my mind, I'm thinking about the um, the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. um, and I use that because she had the issue of blood for years. And she had been, think about it, to think about it from in our terms now. Somebody's sick. They're going from doctor to doctor trying to get help. And that's what she was doing. Right. But she heard about a man that was healing people. She pressed forward. She kept trying to get to that person. She couldn't get to him, but eventually she managed to just touch, I think, touch his garment. Mm -hmm. And Christ says, who touched me? Because he realized the anointing had come out of him. But the reason I'm telling you the story is because I want you to understand she took responsibility. She was the person that was accountable for her healing. So she kept pursuing that. So when you ask, who are, should we be responsible? Absolutely. If we want the positive outcome that we say we do, it's on us. It's not on somebody else. Such a great point. And, and that's why I think this book, and there's so many different nuggets in here, uh, Taz. And I think the thing is, you and I, I think we talked about it last week in the show, that people will want to skip ahead. Yeah. But I think even if they were to skip ahead to something like this one, mm -hmm. they, they would definitely see the connection to the first one. And the second one. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it is still a process regardless of where they start. You say in the Gleam recap for this one, Taz, uh, and I, I want to read just a, a bit of it. Allowing affirming words to illuminate your path by committing daily to positive self-talk. That sounds like an assignment. So what do you want our audience to do when it comes to that, to make positive self-talk a daily part of their lives? Yes, sir. Um some folks like affirmations. Mm -hmm. And if you're an affirmation person, then write your affirmations out. Put them on the mirror. Uh, put them on the refrigerator. You know, put them around your, um, your keyboard, your monitor, your laptop, whatever. Wherever you're going to see it, put it there. Because you need that constant reminder. If you're a person that gets um, your inspiration through music, Play the music daily that helps to feed your soul. If you're a person that likes speeches, sermons, whatever it is, play that all the time because basically you need to be immersed in that. Because even when we're working, we're still thinking. 
Like I said, I was cleaning the house, but I was still thinking. I was having an internal dialogue, and I had to right. finally stop talking <laughs> because I'm thinking, but I'm manifesting that. So, again, you have to affirm um, yourself, and so you have to illuminate it. So whatever it is that does it for you, if there's certain, um, like if you want to be a screenwriter, and let's just say there's certain programs or shows or whatever that really get your juices running, then you need to start absorbing that more. Why would you watch things or do things that don't uh, um, fuel your creativity? Yeah. Again, be intentional about everything that you're doing during the day. And so I would take it now for myself, making this personal for myself as a reader, and as a person who realizes what you said, that this is a daily thing, I would take it a step further. A lot of times there are people around us, we talked about this, who are, are pouring negativity into mm -hmm. us yeah. uh, instead of positivity, who are telling us, you know, you can't do that. What makes you think you can do that? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. or no one, like they said about Jesus, no one good can come from <laughs> from here. You know, they had, yeah. why are you even trying to do that? You know, and then they start thinking you think you're better because mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve something that no one else has done from that area. So what would you say to those people who are not able to find the the positivity around them easily. What would you tell them as a way of being able to still personalizing what you're saying to them and finding that thing daily that can keep them motivated? Well, the first thing that I would say, Cyrus, is um, just because other folks are saying no one good can come from that particular area, there's no reason that you have to buy into that. Yeah. Because if you buy into that, then it's already done. You've already put the period on your life. And right. so they've got, you've got to determine whether or not that's worth, that's all that you want out of life. If you want something more out of life, then you've got to basically cut those people out. We call them toxic people. You're going to be nice and you're going to be kind, but don't let them be a part of your wall because you already see that they're not supporting your vision. They don't have your vision, but it's your vision. Right. So you shouldn't expect other people to support your vision. Be nice, be kind, go about your business. Because if I'm going to base my life on what other people think about me and what I can achieve, then I may not achieve what I want. And it could be people who think I can achieve lots, but I may think I can achieve here. They think I can achieve there. That's two different expectations. So again, it's about understanding your expectations and then being willing to do what it takes and understanding sometimes these people may be family members, they may be your friends, but then again, are they really your friends? Yeah. Because if they can't honestly support you without looking for something in return, then they're not your friend. You need to move on. But I agree, Cyrus, that's the hardest thing I think sometimes for us to be able to do is to remove ourselves from those toxic situations, toxic relationships that are really throwing um, water on the fire that we're trying to burn within in order to reach our goals. So I would tell folks, it's not going to be easy, but we have to shift away from those individuals. You know, when you were talking just now, Taz, uh, about you know, doing the levels, I thought about something that T.D. Jake said to Oprah. When Oprah was talking about her, you know, how messy her relationship with her mother was, mm -hmm. uh, even into death, and how her mother didn't love her the way that she wanted to be loved. And T.D. Jake said something, and I have never heard it, and you probably remember seeing this video. And, and Oprah had an epiphany when he said this, that people can only pour into you to the abilities that they have. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may have a gallon capability, but they only mm -hmm. have a pint. Yes. And they're giving you that pint. They're yes, giving yeah. you all they can give you. Mm -hmm. And you could see it go off in Oprah's head mm -hmm. that she got it. Her mother loved her yes, to the extent could. that she could, that she mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. That was not what Oprah wanted, but, mm -hmm. but she was giving Oprah all that she had. And mm -hmm. so I bring that up to say this, there may be people around you who are well-intentioned, but it does not mean that they know the levels of greatness you can reach. You know, I, you know, my grandmother, regardless of what she told me, the day before she died, Todd, she told me she never thought I would achieve. <laughs> Which seems like the biggest contradiction to me. <laughs> but that's, but I was like, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> but, hey, Dennis, good to see you. 
But it just goes to that point that, you know, a lot of times people can't see it. And Todd, it goes to something else we've talked about in the eight messages so far. And that is, it's not for them anyway. It's no. for us. The for work us. is with us. Mm -hmm. And so we're the ones trying to transform. They're not supposed to be transforming for us, yeah. you know. So we can't expect as much from them. Right, you. I, I want to mention in the reflect and connect. So those who are new, basically, what Taz does, he gives us the message that they would follow themselves off. Then we had our gleam recap, which was affir uh, allow affirming words to illuminate your path by committing daily to positive self talk. And then she gives us our reflect and connect. Taz, I want to touch on this one. Provide an example of your positive self talk. Can you give our audience an example? of what they can start using for themselves. Now, Cyrus, this is something that just popped in my brain. Yeah. So, again, um, God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. and, and I say that because it's, you know, I talk about it in the book, it's his plan. We often think we're going to go right, but we go left. So the first thing that we have to understand is we come into this world with a purpose. But the purpose is not always our purpose. It's someone else's purpose. So therefore, the first thing as far as positive self-talk is accepting that. Mm -hmm. Because if I want to be a um, NBA, uh, I mean, not NBA, a WNBA player mm -hmm. at my height, not to say that you couldn't at my height now, yeah. but with my athletic ability. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with my athletic ability. Yeah. Oh, that might not be what the real purpose is. And I say that because for, for most people, being able to, to marry those two things is challenging. That goes back to the first one. It's so challenging because I want this and it, it, it's, it's this. So to me, getting that foundation first, then understanding, then doing, um, having another one that affirms that it's okay to make missteps. Or to make mistakes because I think lots of times if things just don't fall into place every time we try something then folks get really really discouraged and they don't try anymore yeah. but it may be that you're going down the wrong path or you're on the wrong path at the wrong time it doesn't mean that it won't ever happen but you have to get to a space where you can accept that things don't work out the way you expect them to all the time so I think you know just having some really concrete um Maybe not flashy affirmations, but those affirmations that can pull you back when you're on the brink of walking away, mm. I think are the, the ones that I would start with. And that's the reason I said, you know, he has the plan. We don't have the plan. Right. And, having, and being able to accept that is somewhat challenging. Taz, I, I want to end with this Reflect and Connect. It is a personal question for the audience. But this is probably one of the most powerful ones in this Reflect and Connect, and that is, do you speak life or death over your life? We've been talking about what other people may do to us, but I love the fact it kind of brings it home, Taz, what you were saying earlier about the responsibility is on us. So I want our audience to really think about that. Do you speak life or death over your life? You know, are you breathing life into your goals and dreams? Or are you breathing death into them? by the way you talk to yourself. Why was that an important one for you to mention here, Taz? Because it's so easy to do it, Cyrus. It's so easy to slip back into old ways or to just, not, it may not even be an old way, but you get discouraged and you just, you know, it's like I said to someone recently, what is it, a, a spur up under the bridle or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's like a, a piece of sand in the, um, in the oyster. You, one little thing goes wrong and we start spiraling. Yeah. And before we realize that we're depressed and we're speaking death, we're not speaking life. And so just being conscious of that is so important to changing your world and changing your life and everything that you've ever wanted and getting it. But you got to be mindful of it daily that we can speak life or we can speak death. Love that great message. Again, everyone, message number eight from Dr. Teresa Smith's book, Transformation. Taz, we've come to the end. Uh, next week, we have a one-hour special as we're wrapping up the month that is January. Can you believe that? Top? The first month of 2022 gone. We have a special hour. Um, Dennis says, love it. He has a plan. Uh, go to God to get the best 
plan for you. That is so true. Absolutely. That is so true. That is, a, that is really the summation of this book. <laughs> that, because, I mean, it really is what you talked about, Todd. And it kind of reminds me of our first conversation together before we began this about who this book was for. Because... <laughs> Because, you know, if you're not a person of faith, a lot of this is, you're not getting anything, okay, I don't, I don't get it, you know. Um, but I think that is the big thing here, you know. I, and I think for people to be able to really think about that, you know, who are you allowing to pour into you? But also realizing, hey, uh, Lorianne, good, good to see you. Uh, but also, what are you speaking into yourself? What are you pouring into you? Life or death is in the power of the tongue. The scriptures make it very clear for us. And it really is for us to be able to think about that. So again, make sure you guys get over to Amazon or you can go to SarsWebStore.com. That's my Amazon store there. You'll see Transformation by Teresa A. Smith there. Also, uh, as I mentioned, we have the one hour conclusion next week. We're discussing messages nine and 10. Um, and so, um, so we're definitely looking forward to you guys joining us for that. Taz, I know you have some great things that are coming up soon, but where's the best place for them to go to stay connected with you? Right now, Instagram is the best place to stay connected with me. I'm on Instagram, uh, and it's, things are coming, so you don't want to miss what's coming. Exactly. And make sure you guys are looking out for that good cooking that Taz is doing right here as well. Uh, <laughs> cooking with Taz, is that what it's called, cooking with Taz? Taz in the kitchen. Todd's in the kitchen. I'm, I'm renaming your home show. That's okay. <laughs> Todd's in the kitchen. <laughs> I know cooking was somewhere in there, though. Yes, yes. <laughs> so make sure you guys are definitely staying connected with Todd's Dr. Uh, Teresa Smith is where you guys can find her there. Todd's always a pleasure. Enjoy today's program, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Cyrus. You're more than welcome. We thank you for watching this episode of Cyrus Web Presents with Dr. Teresa Smith. Until next time, you all make it a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.